Hi, I'm Paul, the Happy Gilder. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm just going to go over the process of upcycling an old sewing box that I got from a car boot sale. Now, those who follow me will know that my channel is all about glass art, gold leaf, kind of sign painting and stuff like that. So this is a complete break from the norm. I'm really only uploading it because I filmed the process. It was something I made in the summer and just thought it's quite a nice piece. Some people use lasers with their glasswork and it's just something else that you can do with a laser. So anyway, before I crack on with the video, if you're a fan of kind of reverse glass, gold leaf, sign painting, anything like that, then you're in the right place because that's all this channel's about and I try to release a video every couple of weeks. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, there's a link to my Patreon in the description. I reward my patrons every month with a different vector design. There's also a link to my Etsy shop where I'm selling some of my designs and the Facebook group where everyone's kind of sharing ideas, getting to know each other and that sort of thing. Really good place. Anyway, that out of the way, let's crack on with it. Right, so up until a few months ago, all of my sign writing gear used to be kept in here. Well, all of the stuff I used to carry around. I had lots of paint in, in other drawers and stuff like that. But it's a kind of old sewing box and it was really handy. All of the large tins fitted in the bottom, the smaller tins fit in here, and you could fit knives and blades and stuff in this top bit. That was until I came across something at a car boot sale, which was much more suited to kind of getting all of my gear in it, which is the piece behind me. So I'd bought that, sanded it down, sort of etched my design onto it, and then since then I've been using that. And I've got this just sitting here doing nothing, which is a shame because it's solid wood, it's really nice, and I think it could be something quite special. So looking over it, it's solid wood for the most part, in relatively good condition. The only bit I can see that there's anything wrong with it is it's a bit wormy and around here. It doesn't look like there's any woodworm in it because you'd ordinarily see bits of sawdust around the areas where there's holes where there was woodworm, but that has affected the bottom. So this spine, I'll treat it anyway, just in case, but the bottom I'll knock out and replace. But all of this comes apart. So I can just take every single piece off do a kind of design for each panel that will fit in the laser and then kind of do it on the fly. Now, I haven't prepared anything for this at all. So there are going to be quite a few bits where it's more sort of time lapse and music going on because you're not going to want to see me unscrewing loads of bits and just measuring stuff. When it comes to stuff where there is actual skill involved, I'll stop and I'll kind of go through what I'm doing. I also haven't prepared a design, so I'm going to do that completely on the fly. So the theme I'm going to go with is Harry Potter. I'm going to sort of make it up as I go along, but luckily I've got some files already because I've made like a chest of drawers and a couple of cabinets, which are sort of Hogwarts themed anyway. So I'm going to use those, but the actual design, I'm just going to kind of do it as I make it. So anyway, just going to take this apart, get it measured up, and then we'll go from there. Right, now that was nowhere near as easy as I thought it'd be. I don't know if anyone can tell me the point in flathead screws, I'd really like to know. So if in the comments, if you know why they exist over Phillips, which seemed to just be so much better, but man, they were a mission to get out. They were proper hard in there and they're not very good screws. So they were quite soft and just kept churning up. So I do really like to kind of maintain as much of the original piece as possible. So. What I'm going to do is soak these screws and the kind of spacers in white vinegar and hope that they kind of, you know, come up all right. But the thing is, I, I don't know, I think I might just buy new ones. We'll see. They might come up better. But the main thing is it's in bits. And all I've done is I've made sure that the sort of levers I've kept together. Now, it's obvious the ones that are in the middle because they're quite long, but... The bottom ones and the top ones are ever so similar, but they've got sort of drill holes in just sort of a millimetre or two off. So I've just made sure I've kept them together so that I don't put it all together. And then when I open it, the concertina kind of, you know, looks a bit skew whiff or something like that. 
So I'm now going to take this outside and sand it down, try and get some of that stain off. Also going to smash the bottom out so that I can replace that with a nice bit of board. Right, so that's everything sanded down. I've just done that with like 80 grit sandpaper because it's going to need sanding again later after I've kind of done the woodworm treatment and after I've done the lasering. So I'm not fussed about it being smooth now, just wanted to kind of get the majority of that old wood stain off. And I don't care that it's kind of a bit patchy, I think that adds to it. So I'm going to start by measuring these panels. Um, let's just pop these over here. Now I'm going to start with the bottom piece and just taking into account these sort of bits here which are where the arms sit. So although this is 10 centimetres really I don't want anything that's going to be any text to be going anywhere near here. That's three centimetres down so I might do a border up around here but then the text kind of sitting in that bottom two thirds of this panel. So I'm just going to jump over into Photoshop now and get started making the panels. Right, so here in Photoshop, and let's just create a new document. And the panel that I'm working on is 35 centimetres by 10 centimetres. Let's just pop that in. 300 DPI and all of these settings, pretty much. I'm going to press Control and R to get my rulers up. I'm doing this because I need to kind of just put a guide in for where I don't want any of the text to be. So at the moment this is in inches and I'm just going to change that in the preferences. So preferences, units and rulers. I'm just going to change that to centimetres. You can just drag these down or if you want it to be super accurate you can go new guide and then type in exactly where you want that to be. But I mean, I don't need to do that. I think that's, you know, roundabout right. So no text under here, but I'm gonna go with a border right up to near the edges and quite a decorative kind of pattern in the background. So I'll start with the border and all I'm gonna do there, press T to get the type tool up, make sure it's selected black. And then I'm just gonna click on here. Now, I left this on here because this is a Harry Potter font that's free. I'm going to leave a link in the description, but it makes doing stuff like this so much easier. But I'm not going with that now. I just want to get a nice border. So I know the letterhead font called Saratoga Ornaments has got some really nice borders. And I don't want it too ornate because these are quite small panels. So let's just get these up. I'm going to get my glyphs up. Open this up and then I'm just going to scale up the thumbnail view of these so I can see what I want to, so I can see a bit better. Perhaps something like this. Yeah, I think that looks pretty nice. So the only thing I've got to take into account is that this is the largest of all of the panels and I'm going to want to do this on all of them. So I want to keep this quite small just so that I don't have to sort of scale it up and down for the different panels. So let's have a look. I think something like that is good. Right, so I'm just going to go to that layer and convert that from a type file into just a pixel based raster layer. And then select one edge, transform, and then I'm going to shift and drag that to past the center. And I'll do exactly the same just here. I've covered this in a previous video, which is about how to use glyphs and corner ornaments. So I'll put a, a link to that up the top of the screen. Just flip that horizontal and we're going to shift and drag because it, when you shift and, and move stuff, it either moves vertically or horizontally. And then you don't have to worry about it coming off the sort of exact line where I want this. And I'm going to merge these two by just pressing Ctrl and E, and that merges the layer that you've got selected down with the layer underneath it. I'm going to duplicate that and flip that vertical this time. Shift, drag it up, and Ctrl and E. And then I just want to just drag this around to make sure it snaps to the center. 
that looks pretty good. So now let's get a nice sort of decorative pattern in the background. Now what I've got is I've got these sort of tileable patterns that I vectorized. I traced them from some window samples that a friend of mine sent me. Um, although this isn't my favourite of them, I do think this is a little bit more suited. I don't know why, I just think the sort of stars look a little bit more like it's a sort of magical style thing. So at the moment this is a huge file, so I'm just going to scale this down before I drag it on. So let's go... 10 centimetres, and then I'm just going to drag that from one onto the other. So I'm just going to duplicate this, and the way I've set this up is these are tileable, so you shouldn't have to do any lining up. These will just snap into place. And merge that down, and then duplicate that again. And shift select and drag that into place. Right, one thing I want to make sure is that this is sort of even, and I think that looks pretty good. That looks pretty central. So for now, I'm just going to hide this layer using the little eye tool. And then going back to my border layer, I'm going to go up here and then select the magic wand. Now the tolerance doesn't matter because this is just solid white, so I'm just going to click anywhere inside here. And that selected this inner part and stopped at the sort of black border. I'm going to modify that selection, so I'm going to select Modify Contract. And let's start by doing that by 10 pixels. That looks pretty good. Now I'm going to get this back up and select this layer. And then I'm going to invert that selection so that not the middle panel is selected, but the rest of it. And I can do that by pressing Control, Shift and I, or Select and Inverse. Then I'm just going to delete that. I'm going to inverse it again. And now I'm just going to put a thin stroke around this selection. So I'll go to Edit, Stroke, Something like 8 pixels on the inside, and then deselect. And that's looking pretty nice. I'm going to go with this theme all over the whole piece, and then just add these kind of specific Harry Potter or Hogwarts elements. <laughs> so because this is the biggest panel, I'm going to use this as one storage. So I'm going to go to my Type tool, just click anywhere, and then I'm going to select that Harry P font and click one storage so I'm just going to drag this to the center and I'm just going to scale that up remember in this line here so that looks pretty good right so just dropping back to behind this layer just going to using my marquee actually I'll just hide this a bit because it's quite difficult to see. So just gonna make that selection, make a new layer. I'm gonna fill that white. Not that you can see it, but if I just isolate that layer, that's what that looks like. Right. I'm gonna add a black stroke to that so I can see where the edges are. So double click on the layer, stroke, just go on the inside, and let's just scale this so that it's perfectly centered and so that it you know, sits right with all the text. Now I'm just going to go to my eraser. Go back to the panel I've just made and scale up that brush. I'm just going to press caps lock, zoom into the corners, and then erase these corners. I'm going to take that stroke off now that I've decided to put a panel there. I don't need that. So let's just click there. Looks good. Now I'm just going to 
convert that layer effect into an actual layer and then merge it with the layer and then magic wand again contract that selection should go 10 again yep and then I'm just going to stroke the inside of that as well so stroke this time with black and this is and I've covered this technique as well. This was in a video about how to make sort of border plaques. So again, I'll, I'll put a link to that at the top. Right, I think that looks nice. I'm just gonna scale my font down a tiny bit. Ah, that looks a bit nicer. Let's turn this back on. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I think that looks good. So that is the theme that I'm going to go with across the whole box. I'm not going to show you how I make every panel. But now I'm going to just take this over into Lightburn and get it etched onto the box. Right, so this is Lightburn. And it's quite possibly the easiest bit of software you'll ever use. So all I've got is my JPEG file here. And I'll drag that in. And this sort of area is the workbed of my laser. And what I've got here is the option of setting presets, which I've set a few for different types of wood. So you can see this changing up here. Now this box is made of pine and I have a setting for pine. So if I just click on that and this shows me what those settings are. And that's it. If you just click on frame, that will run the sort of laser around the area that it's going to be working on, just so you know that you've got it accurate. And then it's just a case of, of pressing play and it will just work sort of like a printer. But Instead of printing ink, it's just burning that design into a bit of wood. Right, so that's all the etching done. Annoyingly, this was just a tiny bit too big for me to get into the laser. It's only got so much depth, so that's just gonna have to be a little bare bit. I might just get another bit of wood and etch something to just stick on there, but for now, I'm just gonna have to go with this. But what I'm gonna do, because I pointed out that there was some sort of rot from some old woodworm, I just wanna make sure it's not there anymore. So I'll use this stuff and just put a bit in a cup and then just paint it on with a paintbrush. So I'll get started with that now. And just kind of put it on quite liberally, nice and wet, just so it all soaks in. And then I'm pretty sure there's no woodworm in this. Like I said before, you'd be able to see from the sort of little sawdust patches, but just in case, you know, because I think I'll probably sell this and I want to make sure that I've, you know, done everything I can to make sure it's as good as it can be. So although I said I'm going to replace the base, instead, because I want to keep everything as original as I can, I'm actually just going to put a base in there and then just reinforce this a little bit. So I'll glue it in there and I think that'll just hold nicely rather than replacing it. So I do think woodworm holes do look all right, as long as you can, you know, prove that there's no woodworm. So, yeah, so I'm just going to do all of this. And then once that's dry, I can get the kind of find a grain sandpaper on it and just really smooth that over. Okay.
Right, and here it is. Come out pretty nice. One thing I will say is that took me forever to put back together. Me just thinking that taking it to bits and labeling a few bits would be the way to go isn't the way to go. You know, just as a millimeter out on some of these holes means that concertina just doesn't go together well. So that took me the best part of a day to put back together. So I reckon if you're going to do something like this, get some like colored stickers or something and sort of line them up so that you know exactly what bit goes with what. But it was a nice little project and it certainly looks nicer than it did. Um, not sure what I'll do with it. Likely it will just sit in my house gathering dust like pretty much every other project that I do. But I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please subscribe to the channel and click the little thumbs up icon and please share it with anyone else who you think might enjoy it. So till next time, cheers.